My name is Marcus Fogarty. I'm the Managing Director and Owner of Brandella Skirts Limited. We are manufacturers of skirts, skirt specialists. I know very few, if any, companies who are manufacturing as we are doing it. We're located in um, what was called Old Dunleary, um, between really Dunleary Town and Monkstown. Uh, and we're about 100 metres from, from the, the, the harbour in Dunleary. In Ireland, Brandella would be seen as the older lady's skirt and it's a bit prim and proper and fuddy-duddy. But in France, uh, they would look at the tweeds and the herringbones that we're making, these beautiful woolen fabrics, lamb's wool and all that, and they see it in a very different way. Um, and they would coordinate the skirts in a different way that it looks very, very fashionable. When my grandparents started in 1936, we only had the small little offices in the front. That was for the first few years. The big change came for us in about 1950 when my grandmother um, cracked the American market and we started exporting to the United States. Um, it was really, it was a great achievement for a simple woman from the west of Ireland to be selling to large department stores in, in New York like Lord and Taylor, Lord and Taylor Macy's, Saks. So the business grew uh, pretty phenomenally. We would have had in the mid 70s, we would have had maybe 55, 60 people here. The site here, actually, it, it has grown over the decades. The world has changed around Brandella, but Brandella hasn't. The process of making a skirt, it starts with an idea. Then we do our sketches. Uh, I would make the patterns here. Uh, we do it on a CAD machine, computer-aided design. We generate our, our patterns. Designs don't change a huge amount. We might have a pocket detail or a trim or a different pleat configuration. But basically, most of it is on the computer now, and we can mix and match and change lengths. And you know, We will do a cutting docket. That will go to the cutting room. The cutting room will decide, OK, we've got 300 of this style to cut. These are the sizes. Then they, they would come into the factory for sewing up, depending on some styles will go to the pleating machine, some styles don't have to be pleated. Um, the final operation on that is the pressing. They are then pressed, hung, examined for flaws, measured, checked. We're almost craft at one point, yet we're manufacturing at another point. We're somewhere between the two. We're not highly process driven, we're not highly uh, mechanized. We rely on the skill of the people who are making the product. There are some days you can come out to the factory and you can just get that feeling where people are all working together. There's a sort of quiet, the machines are humming, people are, they, they sort of get into the zone for want of a better way of putting it. And it's, it's just lovely to be there and just see the process of the production coming through and people working and, you know, uh, a sort of harmony. On the good days it's very rewarding and there are bad days too in my view, but the good days outweigh the bad days. Maureen certainly is with us here now. She must be 50 years with us, or very close to it. My name is Maureen Gohan. Anything from alterations to production to looking after customers in the shop. From when I started I can see a lot of things more modern. The, if we go with even the, the machines, in um, comparison to what we had when I started here in 1970, up to having the CAD machine enough for the pattern making and all that, and having the printer and the patterns printed out as to when they come up, the quiz says just to cut around the patterns as opposed to making them up by hand and and uh, laying them up, you know. And as you had seen there from what Chris showed you in laying up the fabric and the cutting out of them, all of that would have changed. And again, the, the staff are skilled and qualified and experienced enough to know that if they see an issue, they'll simply put up the hand and say, look, I'm not sure about this. There will always have been a tremendous loyalty to management like Marcus or his father, JJ, down through the years. My dad used to say it's like sailing a boat, keeping quality in your product. If, he said, if you're sailing a boat and you go slightly off course, 
If you don't correct that, you won't come back naturally to the right course. You'll go further and further and further. So the same example applies to a factory. It's the little small bits every day you have to fine-tune it, fine-tune it. Because if you don't, you'll start to drift off course and you'll get further and then all of a sudden you'll realise you're miles off course. By about 2008, 90% of our production was in Poland. What I would say is with the recession then that came starting in 2008, um, I realised that the model for outsourcing to Eastern Europe had broken down. All the consultants in the world would have said to me, you're crazy to do this. We went back to doing what we knew best, which was making skirts. And that was, while it's, uh, it's very much a work in progress, I think it was the best decision I've made. The next step for Brandella really is to relocate to a purpose-built factory. There's very fond memories here, and uh, I, I know it would be a sad day, very sad, but we're, we're prepared for the change, and we're up for it and looking forward to beginning a new life in the new factory, wherever that's going to be. I know it has to be done, but you know, at the end of the day, um, you can't be too sentimental about these things. On the other hand, I think you have to also respect the past and the people who worked and the people who contributed to making the company. You can't forget those lightly. If we can get those ghosts to travel with us to the new site, then I think we have a future going forward. Um, but we have to be nice and hope the ghosts will come with us.